Hey, it's Chris, and today I'm gonna be helping you enjoy your Apple Watch more than you already do. And if you don't have one yet, then you can look forward to tweaking these things that we're gonna be talking about once you get it. Now, already, previously on the channel, we've checked out some tips, unbelievably useful Apple Watch tips. We've also checked out some unbelievably useful Apple Watch apps, lots of those. I'm gonna link that stuff up down below if you're new around here. Today, though, we're gonna cover the thing that's been missing, which is unbelievably useful Apple Watch settings. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to make sure you got your Apple Watch on, I want you to load up your settings app, and we're gonna go through this together and tweak this, make sure that we have it running at its most optimal, most useful, <laughs> what? Sometimes I talk myself into a corner. We're just gonna make sure that it's as awesome as possible. Are you ready? We're just gonna jump right in and start at the top and work our way down. So we're gonna pop into general first. We're gonna skip about, we're gonna skip software update, we're gonna skip orientation and background, refresh. The first thing that we're gonna jump into is the wake screen settings. And you see three things right away. Wake screen on wrist raise. And you definitely want that because that's the whole point of your watch. <laughs> so when you raise up your wrist, you wanna be able to see what's on screen. So that's checked. Wake screen on crown up. This is something that you definitely want turned on. Here's why, I covered this as a tip in a previous video. Let's say your screen is dark. All right, so let's say you're in a movie theater and you just wanna see what time it is, but you don't wanna bug everybody around you. So you can just kind of rotate this up a little bit and see what time it is and then put it away. Okay, and the other thing I've got checked here is auto launch audio apps because if I start playing audio somewhere, iPhone or wherever, I want to definitely have that auto launch. If you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see some on tap settings. And the first one, no, it's not nitro on tap. Don't I wish. It is the, a possibility to wake for 15 seconds or wake for 70 seconds. I've got it set to 70 seconds. The reason is when I wake up the screen, I wanna see what's on there for a while. If I put my wrist down, I want it to stay on, and then I want to be the one who makes the screen go away. So I can just cover it up with my hand and it goes away. So it may take up a little bit more battery, but it's worth it. If you scroll down just a little bit more, you can see on screen raise, show the last app, never unless in session, within two minutes of last use, or within one hour of last use, or always. I've got to set it to two minutes because I figured that's just about how long I'm gonna to want to see that last app before I move on or forget about it or whatever. So I think that's probably a pretty good setting. That's what I would recommend anyways. If you scroll down a little bit more here in general, you see return to last session app and you can select some of the stuff that you have installed that works with this. And what I'm gonna do, uh, definitely heart watch, but I'm gonna turn on everything with audio. So music, now playing, overcast, radio, and then my stopwatch because that just makes sense. And workout because whatever I'm doing, these things, whenever I'm doing those, I want to see them first things first. So that is my wake screen settings. So back in the general menu, we're gonna say nightstand mode, I'm gonna leave that alone, that's what you want. If you're like me uh, and you use this as your alarm clock every morning, you definitely wanna have that on. Hand off, leave it, website data, you can clear your cache and stuff. I'm gonna leave that alone for this video. Dictation, have that enabled. Screenshots, let's get in there. You want your screenshots enabled. If you don't know how to take a screenshot, it's very easy. This screen will always remind you, uh, but you hold down the two buttons on the side over here to take a screenshot and then it flies over to your iPhone. And so, uh, yeah, I, I use that sometimes. Uh, if I wanna save something, remember it for sure, um, you want your screenshots on. Scrolling down, profile, you can leave that alone for now. Regulatory, leave it alone. Usage, uh, if you wanna come in here and see what's being used, uh, it's a little bit slow like you can see. This is your storage. So I have 4.7 gigs available still and I've used five, almost six. That used to be a lot less, but I installed a ton of games because I'm making a video on Apple Watch Gaming which you're gonna wanna subscribe to and have that coming up. Then you can scroll down and see what's eating up all your storage. So the top thing for me is music. Let's get out of general and let's go through the other stuff. Do not disturb. This is something that you can just turn on like whenever you want, if you just don't wanna be bothered. I've got this scheduled using my iPhone. So from 8.45 at night 
to 5.30 in the morning. And also I've come down here and I've turned on do not disturb during workout because if you're working out, you wanna concentrate. And so I think that's something else that's good to flick on. Now here's something that you might wanna mess with, brightness and text size. So if you come in here, you can make the screen brighter or dimmer and this is gonna obviously affect your battery, so I've got it set right in the middle. That's a pretty good compromise for me. As I get older, maybe a little bit bigger isn't a bad thing. Uh, but if you wanna fit more in, like if you like to read Reddit on the Nano app, for instance, and you wanna fit more on the screen, you can shrink that down a little bit, and that's pretty useful. But I'm gonna keep it right about there. You should always go and check out the accessibility features for whatever device you're on, because there's some interesting, useful stuff in there that sometimes I wish they would just make a regular feature. Um, I'm gonna leave some of these alone. VoiceOver, Zoom, there's bold text again. You can turn on some labels, grayscale, uh, maybe save some battery there, reduce transparency. I'm gonna scroll all the way past all of that stuff, past reduce motion, and here's something that I do find interesting. It's the chime. So if you get in here, you can turn chimes on, like you see I've done, and I've got this set on an hourly schedule. I found this to be really helpful in watchOS 6, the developer beta, because it helps me keep track of my time. I feel like I'm more aware. If it uh, taps me on the wrist, haptic touch on the wrist every hour, it's like, okay, an hour went by. And it just helps me kind of understand where I'm at during the day. You know, old watches have done this for a long time, but it's new here and I really recommend turning that on. You can see, you can set that to have a sound. I usually have this in quiet mode, so it just taps me instead of playing a sound, and that works great. If you scroll down a little bit more on accessibility, one other thing you might wanna check out is the walkie-talkie tap to talk. If you want, you can turn that on, and if you use the walkie-talkie a lot, you might rather just tap the button instead of having to hold it down. I'm gonna leave that off. I like being able to hold it down because it seems like it would cut down on errors more, like sending a message you don't want to. Uh, but yeah, that's nice to have. All right, let's go back and let's go into our Siri settings. And this is interesting. People set this up different ways. I like to have all three of these checked here. Listen for H-E-Y-S-I-R-I. -I. I'm not gonna say it because I don't wanna set everything off. Raise to speak and press digital crown. So press digital crown, that was like the very original way to activate Siri. Just hold this in and it would activate or raise to speak. I have that on because then you don't even have to say uh, S-I-R-I <laughs> to get it going. Uh, that's very convenient, use that all the time. I do have listen for uh, hey S-I-R-I enabled. Some people, if they have like a HomePod, they just only want the HomePod to respond to that. But I use this enough, I use it a lot, enough that I'm gonna keep that enabled. But it's something that you may wanna configure based on the devices that you have in your house or office. All right, so let's get back out and let's check out sound and haptics. Um, I've got my alert volume set all the way to the top because if I have the sound on, I would definitely want to hear it. Uh, but like I said, I usually have it in quiet mode. Um, silent mode, if you want your timers and alarms to go off, even when you've got the rest of the sounds muted, then you want to have that checked, and, and I do. If you scroll down a little bit more, you can see that you can limit the volume. Uh, I have that unchecked, but here's something that I messed with. It's the haptics. So you can turn on haptic alerts or turn them off. Uh, obviously, I want those on. Haptics are when the little motor inside kind of buzzes and feels like it taps you on the wrist. Um, so I leave that on, but I change it from default to prominent because again, this is another battery issue, but I want it to really tap me and make sure that I know uh, there's an alert. So I definitely have that uh, press. It's something you could try and see if you like it better or not. But when you change the setting, it'll kind of give you a demonstration. Uh, here we've got cover to mute. That's what I was showing you earlier. I like to have that on because I like to cover that and mute things from time to time. I find it really useful. Let's get back into our settings and passcode. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I've got it on simple passcode. I guess I'll just show you. Um, so simple passcode, just four digits. Uh, it's a little bit faster. I've got it set to erase my data after 10 failed attempts because why not? Privacy, let's get in here because what's cool about Apple is they give you control over this stuff. You can come in here and say, um, I'm gonna allow location services, I'm gonna allow location sharing uh, or disallow, uh, enable offline finding, which can definitely be useful. And then you can come down here and you can say, I want the app store to be able to use my location uh, or the Apple Watch faces or all these different apps. You can see uh, what apps are using your contacts or not. 
The only one that I've got enabled right now is Uber, and I have to change this setting on my iPhone. The reason I have it is so I can share where I'm at and what ride I'm with with my contacts. I find that useful, although I do hate to share that with Uber, honestly, but at least it's an option. Okay, I'm gonna skip calendars, reminders, Bluetooth, but I'm gonna come down here to microphone, and I, I like having the new uh, measure sounds on here, so if you're not sure what that is, let me just launch this really quick. Okay, so you can launch this app, and now it'll tell you how the noise environment is, if it's dangerous or healthy. And so if I yell right now, uh, then you can see, then that was too loud. It turns yellow and it tells you it's okay to have prolonged exposure or not. Well, you don't have to have that on. You can turn that off uh, if you want to. So measure sounds, you can turn that on or off. And then you can scroll down and you can either enable or disable the which apps have access to your mic. You know, if you don't want to get an ad targeting you because you said something, if you're paranoid about that kind of stuff, you can come in here and turn that off. I have it enabled for drafts because I always use that. I have it enabled for just press record, for instance, um, but it's good to have that control and I definitely recommend that you look there and tweak it. Okay, let's get out of privacy. That is an important category. And let's go into App Store. And you can see I've got automatic downloads turned on. Uh, so it's gonna automatically download new app purchases, including free stuff that are made on other devices. I do like to have that enabled on my Apple Watch. I don't always like to have that enabled for my iPhone and iPad though. Clock. This is something that's been around for a long time, but you know, my dad used to do this back in the day. He would come in and, and not on his Apple Watch, of course, but just like in the car and set the clock ahead like five minutes or 10 minutes. And then you can also control the chimes and the sounds or whatever here. Speak time, if you, if you scroll down a little bit here on clock, you'll see speak time. This is a new thing uh, where if you use two fingers and I forget exactly what the interaction is to double tap on one of your watch faces then it will speak the time out loud, which is pretty cool in watchOS 6. Now, if you keep scrolling down, there's something very important here. It's the Siri face data sources. Your Siri watch face, let's find it. Here it is. This is what it looks like. You have all kinds of stuff feeding into this face. That's what makes it so awesome. Well, if you come to this Siri face settings here, watch face settings, this is where you can control what apps show up or don't here. And I think a lot of people don't realize that this is something you can control. So I've highly tuned this to have the stuff that I want, except breathe. I never use that, I don't want it. Uh, so I'll get that out of here. Uh, that must have reset with watchOS 6. Um, so yeah, this is definitely worth coming down in here and tweaking it to make your Siri watch face uh, more personalized and make it better for you. And let's go to workout. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see running auto pause. I've got that enabled because if I'm out exercising and I stop, I want it to pause the workout. I want it to keep going. And so that's pretty useful, pretty smart. And then scroll down a little bit more. I've also got start workout reminder enabled. The reason I do is because if you start a workout but you forget to start tracking it, this will help uh, ensure that it's all not wasted. The reason I'm making this is because I know probably 90 plus percent of people that buy an Apple Watch never dive into the settings and like tweak stuff and they just use it stock like right off the shelf and there's nothing wrong with that. It's very enjoyable that way. But the difference here is like getting a car and riding in it and riding in a car that you've personalized. Like you set the radio stations, if you still do that, if you listen to that, you're not using CarPlay and you've got the AC adjusted just right and the seat is just where you want it and same with the mirrors. Like it's a big difference. So the Apple Watch and the personalized Apple Watch, that is what we're talking about here and why this video is hopefully so useful. So I would love to know if you tweak things just a little bit differently than I do, leave me a comment and tell me what and why and let's kind of have a discussion down there and make sure that people have the very best of reasoning for whatever settings that could possibly be tweaked. Let's do that. And don't forget to follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter. And somebody told me to quit gesticulating, which I had to look up, but apparently it's like using my hands so much. There's gonna be more gesticulating because I like to gesticulate. So, all right, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.